One, two, three, testing. One, two, three, hello. Ah, well, hello, guys. Uh, it's Ben here from Airline Sim. Welcome to another very quick stream. Uh, today I'm here just answering a little question for uh, one of our uh, customers whose uh, name is, uh, I think, Matthias, uh, who sent me um, an email a couple of days ago when we were doing the uh, Q400 flying around the med. And he was saying that he was struggling with how to put together a SID and a star. So when you're uh, planning a flight, how do you know which SID to match up with the flight plan and which star to match up with the flight plan as well. So I understand that this sometimes can be uh, a little bit complicated. So uh, what I thought I would do, we're not really going to do any uh, flying today because we probably uh, won't get time. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to show you really quickly uh, how to plan a flight and how to understand how the SIDs and the stars uh, go together. So that's basically uh, what we're going to do. So the first of all is we are here on the ground at the moment at uh, Ibiza. Um, we're in a bit of a turnaround state at the moment. We've uh, just flown in. This is the state that we uh, saved from a couple of days ago when we did the flight from... Uh, where was it we flew from? Uh, from Malaga, wasn't it? Malaga to Ibiza. Um, so let's say we want to fly uh, back to uh, Malaga now. So let's get things planned. And I'll show you a little bit about how you would uh, go about that. So I just did a quick practice of this to make sure it was going to work. So I'm just going to clear that and type in a brand new flight. So this is how I go about it. Now, there's lots of different ways to plan a flight. Uh, you can use uh, PFPX, which is another one, which is a kind of payware thing. Um, I use Simbrief because I just find it really quick. Um, you don't really have to do an awful lot. You pretty much just type in what you want. And within a couple of seconds, you've got the flight plan and you can print it off and, and away you go. Um, PFPX is, is really good. It's a really, really good app, but it's a little bit more, uh, I guess, involved. And there's probably a bit more to know and a bit more to think about. So I think, you know, if you're if you just want a really, really quick flight plan, then Simbrief is fantastic for doing that. So uh, let's do this then. So we are uh, Air Berlin. That's uh, BER. Pick yourself a random flight number. So one, two, two, one. And then we're going to go today from uh, Ibiza, that's L-E-I-B, and we're going to uh, Malaga, that's M-E-L-E-M-G, I think, yeah. Now, it will choose you an alternate kind of automatically. Now, L-E-M-D, I think, he said, is Madrid. Now, Madrid's quite a long way from Malaga, to be honest with you. Uh, one kind of slightly weird thing about Simbrief is that it does tend to choose uh, alternates that are quite a long way away. So uh, we're here in Ibiza. We're going to fly to Malaga, and the alternate is all the way here, like right across the middle of Spain. So I think in reality, you probably would divert somewhere a little bit closer than this. You would probably divert to somewhere like Murcia or somewhere like Almeria. So uh, so let's just do that. I don't even know what the code is for Almeria. Almeria Airport. There you go. I've already typed it in. Uh, so L E A M. So let's go there instead because I don't think we'd probably be going to L E A M. There you go. All right. So uh, we've got the uh, the airline. We've got the flight number, departure, the arrival, the alternate, and then that's today's date. And then departing in Zulu time, which is about 50 minutes from now. So this is quite cool because it actually gives you about 40 minutes to kind of print this off and get yourself in the airplane and put some fuel on and stuff. So that's also pretty cool. So let's choose our airframe. In this case, we're in the Dash 8, but again, it is exactly the same if it's a 777 or a 737 or an Airbus. And then it comes up with a couple of things. So it says the time on route. It will have a look at the current weather and it'll pick you a runway for the departure and the arrival, which makes life uh, nice and easy. And it will also give you a route as well. So the route it's chosen automatically is this one. Uh, there are some just suggested routes that you can use that other people have used as well. Or you can open one of these at laps and you can have it calculated from this. But this looks pretty good to me. And if actually we click on the analyze route and we can see that it's now generated that route from uh, Ibiza down to Malaga and uh, all is well. So what we can do now is we can generate this uh, OFP or this briefing package. Before we do that, we can let the program 
choose the number of uh, passengers if we want it to choose it itself, a random number, uh, or we can choose it ourselves. So let's say today, let's have a full house. Uh, the cargo, by the way, in Simbrief is, is added separately. The passenger load includes the baggage for the passengers, all right? Uh, the cargo is, is separate. So don't think that you have to add the passengers and then add the cargo in as, as kind of weight for their bags. Um, the passenger baggage weight is included in this. So cargo is separate. That's like, you know, boxes of flowers and uh, chocolates and things. So there you go. We press that and it uh, generates the Simbrief package. And we give it a couple of seconds. And uh, now we're gonna see lots of stuff most of which really is not that important to be honest with you uh there are a couple of things that are very important so let's open it up and you can see that we've now got our route now there's a bunch of stuff in here that i could sit and talk about for hours most of it's not really that important there are a couple of things that are important one is these weights along the bottom here so our takeoff weight and our landing weight and our zero fuel weight this is important because this is our cruise altitude uh 000 feet or flight level 240 uh, this is important because this is how much fuel we've got to put on the airplane. And then this bit down here is important because this is the route. All right, so we're going from LEIB, that's Ibiza, to LEMG, that's Malaga. And we're leaving off runway 24, and we're arriving onto runway 13. Now, the rest of this bit, if you're thinking, well, I don't really quite understand this. What's all this mean? Well, this is the route, all right? So the bit... The, the actual route starts here. Now, you might think, well, hang on, I don't... How do I know the difference between this bit? How do I know what the route is and what isn't? Well, kind of once you've seen a few flight plans, it will all kind of make sense, really. The actual route is this bit here, the bit that starts at Beva. So, Beva down to Rolas. And, in fact, if I go to Sky Vector, which is a pretty cool little, uh, uh, little app... I mean, I don't really use this on a kind of day-to-day -day basis because you don't really need to, but... It is quite... Did I say LEMG? Yeah, LEMG. Yeah, okay. And then let me paste the route in. And if I hit enter, then you can actually see what's going on here. So, here we are. We're in Ibiza. And the runway in Ibiza is kind of down here in the corner. And what we're going to do is we're going to fly out from Ibiza. We're going to go to this point here called Beva. And then we're going to follow this airway. Now, an airway is like a freeway or a motorway or a road in the sky. That's essentially all it is. And they're at fixed points in, in the world. So the aeroplane knows it's on the airway. Air traffic control knows you're on the airway. Effectively, you can't just kind of fly around randomly. You've got to follow a kind of pre-planned route. And that's what we've done. So if we go back to the Simbrief page, we can see that we're going to go from uh, Beva along the upper mic 603 to ALT, which is Alicante. And then we're going to take the upper November 851 to Rolas. And as you can see, that is all here. So there you go. There's Beva. There's the upper mic 603. There's Alicante. There's the upper November 851 to Rolas. And then it doesn't really know where we want to go from Rolas. So it just draws a straight line over to the airport in Malaga. So you might be thinking, okay, I get this now. I understand there's a little pre-planned route and we can program this into the airplane and it will fly it all the way there. But how do we get from Ibiza? How do we get out of the airport to this point here called Beva? And how do we get from... Uh, roll ass at the other end to the airport of Malaga. Okay, well, this is where the charts come in. So, uh, this is the Aerosoft Charts app, which I'm using now. There is a Navigraph app one as well. I can recommend uh, both. The Navigraph one is excellent. Uh, the Aerosoft one is also excellent. So, pick one. I have both, but I'm just going to show you the um, uh, Aerosoft one for, uh, for this uh, real quick bit. Uh, so, let's type in Ibiza as the departure, and let's type in... Uh, Malaga Costa del Sol as the arrival. So, here you go. Right. So, we've got the charts. These are all the charts for Ibiza, and these are all the charts for Malaga. Hang on, there's some questions in the chit chat. Uh, just checking that channel. You are live. Yes, we are live. We are still live. Um, what if you put too much fuel in the plane? Will it affect the performance of the flight plan? Well, you don't need to put too much fuel on the plane because the sim brief. Uh, flight plan will tell you exactly how much fuel to put on the plane. So um, airlines will never put more fuel on the plane than they need to because carrying fuel around uh, costs money. So if you imagine the, the, the more the airplane weighs, then the more fuel you burn. So just carrying fuel that you don't need 
will cost you money because you're burning fuel to burn fuel, if you make sense. So we would only ever put the amount of fuel on the plane that the flight plan calls for. So there you go. Hello, Adam. So in this situation in the Dash 8, you go into the little weight and balance thing, and then you can load. I'm, I'm not going to do all this because I really can't be bothered. But basically, all you've got to do, the aim of the game here is we can see that our zero fuel weight for this uh, particular leg, it's already been planned for us, is 25,470. So what we need to do is we need to just load this up and put enough people in to get this figure here. At the moment, it's 21,413. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll just do it. I'll just show you how it's done. So let's just throw some random numbers in here. So... 17, 17, 17, 8, calculate, uh, right, where's that, 23, so we're still a little bit low, so let me, uh, let me raise that one to 20, let me raise that to 12, calculate, 24, 2, ah, oh, we're getting somewhere now, we're still a little bit light, let me put some more, uh, baggage in, so let's put, uh, I don't know, a thousand in the aft, all right, so where are we now? We're uh, 24,596. All right, we're still 1,000 down. So let's, um, uh, let's go to 14 there. Let's go to 22 there and then hit calculate. Now, where are we now? We're at 25,190. <gasps> okay, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Let's put a little bit more on 18. So we did put a full house, remember? So 24, 24. Uh, where are we now? Where are we now? 24, 25, 444. Four, four. Okay, that's close enough. It's got to be 25, 460. But believe me, that's like the weight of my wife's handbag. So uh, that's not going to make any difference. So as you can see now, we've put uh, a thousand pounds of the bags in the what they call the boot of the Dash 8. We've loaded it with passengers. And you can see that the weight and balance is in the middle, which is kind of where we want to be. So what we would do now is just put the fuel in. That's 2932. Whoops, that goes in this box here, which is called takeoff fuel 2932. And then hit calculate. And there you go. So uh, that's that's the airplane loaded. So the, the, the airplane's loaded, the fuel is loaded, and uh, life is good. That's how you load the airplane. There's nothing more to it than that. So let's go back to the charts because that's the important bit here is going to be the Bava 1 Echo to Bava. So we've looked at the flight plan, we've looked at the, at the map, and we can see that we've got to get from Ibiza somehow to Bava. Now, we can't just randomly take off and fly around because there's aeroplanes flying all over the place. There's aeroplanes coming in here from Valencia, aeroplanes coming in from Mallorca, there's aeroplanes coming up from uh, North Africa. So we can't just randomly fly around. We've got to get to Bava in a, in a, a kind of controlled manner. And the way we do that, is we're going to have a look at the uh, departure charts. Now, which runway has it chosen for us? It's chosen runway 24. So let's open up the departure charts for runway 24. And you can see that if we're going to go from runway 24, the only way to get to Bava, there is only one, which is this one called the Bava 1 Echo. All of the other departures go the wrong way. So if we were going to Mallorca or Menorca, we would go on the Cabri one, or we would go to Surib, or we would go north if we were going to go up to Europe, we would go to Godox. But we're going to Bava. There's, there's only one way to get to Bava, which is this one, which is called the Bava One Echo. And if we click on this bit here, you see where it says uh, Sears Runway 24 P01? So what this, this page here kind of shows you what it would look like. This one here shows you how it's going to be flown. So it says on the 2334 radial of the IBA VOR at Sonta, a right turn to follow the 15 DME IBA arc and intercept the 272 IBA to Bava and the initial climb is 6,000. So you probably, by now, your brain is hurting going, oh my God, how on earth does this work? Well... The wonderful thing about the Q400 is that it will do all of this for you. You don't have to do any of it yourself. If you were flying a little Cessna, then you would have to manually tune the VOR here at Ibiza. You would then take off, and then what you would do is, is that uh, you, when you got 13, you see how it says 13 of the IBA? Let me zoom in a little bit. So what you would do then in your little Cessna, when you got 13 miles from the VOR, you would know you're at Sonta. So then you would turn right, and you would make sure that you were no more than 15 miles away. This is called an arc. And then once you get to the 272 radial, because you'd tune that on your other radio, then you'd know that you're at this point and you've got to make the left turn to Bava. Now, 
in the real world of airline flying, all of this stuff uh, would just hurt your brain. It would just be impossible to do this day in, day out. So the beauty of the Dash 8 is that it's what you call an RNAV equipped aeroplane, and it knows exactly where all these points are. It knows where Sonter is, it knows where Baver is, and it will fly this whole departure for you. All you got to do is plug it in, and it works. It's as simple as that. So that's what we're going to do. So we know that we can get ourselves to Baver. Now, what happens at the other end? Because we're going to come from Rolas, and we're going to get ourselves from Rolas to LEMG, which is uh, Malaga, to runway 13. All right. Well, once again, the charts come into play. You cannot do anything in aviation without the charts. If you don't have the charts, you are literally stumbling around in the dark. So here we go. You can see the only way to get to Malaga from Rolas is this one here, which is the Rolas 1 Quebec, because as you can see, all these other arrivals are from different directions. So aeroplanes that are coming up from uh, Morocco and Tunisia would be coming up from Pimos or Pecop or over to the left here from Jerez or aeroplanes coming from uh, the UK and Germany would be using these northern ones. Because we're coming in from uh, the, Bali the uh, Balearic Islands, which is kind of the other way, we're coming in from Rolas. There's no other way to get there. It's really, really simple. So we're going to fly from Rolas, and we're going to fly along this point here to Granada, which is the GDA, and eventually this brings us out here at this point called Tolzu. Now again, all these are kind of based off uh, nav aids which are on the ground. So we would know that we were at Rolas when we were on this radial and this distance from the Malaga VOR. Again, this is all really hard stuff. This is tuning radios and seeing how far you are away from things. It's really difficult to do. But the beauty of the Q400 and all the big uh, complex aeroplanes is that they can do all of this for you. The, the aeroplane knows where Rolas is. It knows where GDA is. It knows where Tolzu is. And it will go there as long as you tell it to. So what happens when we get to Tolzu? All right, well, here's the, uh, the big thing. So we're coming down. Did I say runway 13? Yeah, I said runway 13. So we have a quick look now at the approach charts to runway 13. And as you can see now, confusingly, there's two of them. There's an ILS Zulu and an ILS Yankee. So you kind of think, ah, oh, okay, uh, which one do I choose? Well, to be honest with you, in this situation, it doesn't really matter. The reason that there's two of them is actually pretty simple. Uh, if you have a look at the Zulu arrival, you can see that once you get around the corner here, down towards the runway, you're actually basing this arrival on a VOR at Malaga Airport called MLG. Now, let's say, for example, you, you do this arrival and someone pulls the, uh, the power out, let's say a, a farmer uh, is there with his tractor and he drives over the power cable, so the MLG VOR is not working anymore. Well, what you can do then is you can use the other arrival, which is the ILS Yankee, and it uses a different VOR, which is called the AGP. So if you're doing the, uh, the Zulu, it uses MLG. If you're using the Yankee, it uses AGP. So there's two VORs. One is there as a backup for the other if it's not working. For the purposes of what we're going to do today, we could use the, the, uh, the Yankee or the Zulu. It doesn't matter at all. They both do the same thing. So we come from Tolzu, and then we come down to Martin, and then we're going to turn right to Nepal, and then we're going to come down to the runway. And again, you don't have to worry about where Martin is or where Tolzu is or Nepal because the aeroplane will know all of this. All right? And that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. So now all we need to do is jump in the aeroplane and actually just type all this into the FMS. So we've already got a, a flight plan in from when we arrive from uh, Malaga. So the, for the return flag... To clear it from the dash eight, we just hit 99 and enter, and then that clears the flight plan. So let's do the first bit. So it's L E uh, I B, that is Ibiza. And then what we do then is we say menu depart, and we said I have a memory like a sieve 24. Yep, there you go. So then we say runway 24, that's number two, and then the SID was the Baver 1 Echo. So the Baver 1 Echo is number one. So we hit number one. And then we the transition is runway 24. That's correct. So hit enter and then flight plan. And there you go. And you can see now it's populated the entire departure. So it's going to go to Sonta. And then it's going to do some all this stuff where it says intercept and radials and all. This is all kind of FMS language for it needing to go where it's going to go. 
but as you can see it gets you to Beva and then from Beva we're just going to fill in the rest of the flight plan so we're going to go on the upper mic 603 a little bit weird in the uh, in the Q400 that we use this little list thing so we're going to go on the upper mic 603 that's number two and that's going to take us to what do we say uh, ALT oops that's going to take us to ALT there there it is number three and then from ALT, where are we going? Then we're going on the upper November 851 to Rolas. So we're going to go there. We're going to go list. And um, we said the upper November 851. That's number 10. And uh, hopefully we should see Rolas here. There you go. Number eight. So there you go. And then the final bit from Rolas is just the arrival. So that's L E M G. Hit enter. There's Malaga. Hit accept. And now what we do is we just put the arrival in. So we go arrive. Okay, it didn't pick up the uh, the arrival. So we just type that in there. There you go. Accept. And then we're going to come. Did we said runway 13, didn't we? So that's number two. And then the start was the whatever it was. What did we say? It was the Rolas 1DC. See that one. So let's go forward. And it was the Rolas, there you go, number 15, the Rolas 1 DC Q, 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 that one. And then the approach, and we said the ILS. And again, it doesn't really matter which one that we choose because we know that it depends on the Navig that's working on the day. But let's say the Zulu for the sake of argument here. So we're going to do the ILS Zulu, so that's number three. So let's press that. And then, oh, transition. Okay, the transition is the bit... Where do we? Where does the start end and where does the approach begin? Well, again, you're going to find this information on the chart. It's going to begin at Tolzu. All right, so let's go to number two. Enter flight plan. And now all we can do is we can just clean this up and just make sure that it's going to do the right thing. So let's just delete that. Delete that no link. And you've got roll us in twice. So you can delete the uh, second one. And then there you go. So Malaga 49 GDA, if you remember, this is this all uh, chimes with what we saw on the chart from Tolzu, 33 Ma, 33 Ma, Nepal, and then down. And now if we go to the, let me just change the viewpoint around, and let me put this back into nav. Let me just go back to there. And now you can see, it's a bit difficult to see the, um, uh, the, the kind of flight plan and the dash because the the display is not quite as clear as a Boeing. It's a bit of a stupid airplane in that sense. But you can see what it's going to do here. So let me go previous, 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 previous. There you go. So that's where we are. That's our little airplane on the ground in Ibiza. If I hit next, you can see it's going to take us. Uh, let me see if I can make that a bit better. There you go. All right. So you can see it's quite. It's kind of difficult because of the way that it shows it. Oh, there you go. That's okay. That's that's pretty clear. So you can see now there's the, there's the airport. We're going to come out, and we're going to turn right, and we're going to do that. And if you have a look at the chart, let's go back to the SIDS off runway 24. Okay, there you go. So you can see now the aeroplane is showing us its own representation of what is on the chart. So there's the chart. There's the Beaver 1 Echo. And that's what it looks like in the aeroplane. You can see the aeroplane is showing you effectively what the chart is showing us, which is kind of cool. So Beaver, Rolas... Tolzu, and again, there's the arrival. So it all starts at Tolzu, comes down here, 33 Ma, and then it comes down, and there's the runway. And if you remember, let's go back to the uh, arrival chart, the stars for runway 1, 2, and 1, 3. All right, looks the same. We're going to come in from Rolas. We're going to come into Tolzu, and then what do we say, the Zulu? There you go, Tolzu, 33, 3.3 miles from Ma, what that means, and then Nepa, and then down there. So you can see... The aeroplane is going to do exactly what the chart uh, is telling us to do. And all you've got to do in the dash is just make sure where it says uh, nav that from LEIB, which is where we are now, it's going to take you to the next point, which is 424 feet. So it's saying that at 424 feet, we've got to do something. All you've got to do when you take off in the dash, you take off in heading select mode. And then once you've got the flaps up and the gear and everything, just press nav and it will say LNAV in the corner and then the aeroplane will quite simply direct itself along this white line all the way, all the way down this way, all the way down to Malaga. 
So there you go. That's it, my friends. That is how you um, that's how you look at and plan and stick in the FMS the uh, flight plan for the Dash 8 in the uh, Majestic Q400. So there you go. Is there anything in the chit chat that you uh, want to ask me or you want to talk about? Let me have a quick look. Um, ba ba ba. Right. Um, what do you put too much flight plan? Uh, Simbrief seems not to allow too much fuel. Um, the the fuel burn for Simbrief uh, is is the most accurate out of all of the flight plans that I've ever tried, or certainly compared with the real ones. So that's kind of my experience of it. Uh, I'm an F on the A380. Ah, oh, cool. Hello, Mahmoud. Nice to uh, have you on board. Um, so much paperwork, says Daniel the Gamer. Yeah, there is. There is a lot of paperwork, but to be honest with you, it's kind of like if you don't do this. So, like, if you don't, if you don't have a plan, then when you actually fire the airplane, it's all going to be quite complicated. Um, just one other quick thing, actually, while we're here, let's just talk about the the actual fuel side of things because that's kind of quite important. So, let's jump back back in the airplane. We can see now that we've uh, have we loaded the fuel. I don't think we have loaded the fuel actually. So let me. Uh, Send that to Flight Sim. There you go. You can see it's updated the fuel now. And the weight of the airplane will be updated as well. So now what we can do is we can... Why is it saying gone? There you go. Um, we can go to the fuel page. Go to page one. And these are all the figures from the previous flight. All right. So what we need to do is we need to enter the new one. So zero fuel weight for this flight is going to be 25 for 60. So let's change that. Just overwrite it. 25 for 60. Don't worry about basic weight and passengers. It just gets really complicated doing it this way. Just bang the zero fuel weight straight in here and, and it will make life a lot easier for you. Alternate is, we said, going to be... What did we say it was going to be? It was whatever it was. Uh, Mercier or whatever. Uh, that's going to be 566 kilos to get us there. So we're just going to put that in this bit here. And then final reserve is going to be 670. All right. So that's pretty similar to what we've already got. And then there's the total fuel on board. Now, if you can't, you just add those two up. And if you're a little bit hard of adding up, which uh, I am, because I'm not very clever, then you can just press fuel system. And it will give you the total fuel on board there, which is 29 three five so just type in two nine three five enter and that will update the gross weight now this gross weight should be pretty much what we have on the paperwork so remember that two eight three nine five and it's saying here two eight two eleven now our estimated takeoff weight is a little bit lighter than what we are now and the reason for that of course is we're going to use a little bit of fuel starting the engines and taxiing out so by the time we take off our gross weight's pretty much going to be uh, what it is on the uh, on, on the paperwork. To be honest, in the dash, um, you want to get all these figures correct. But like 100 kilos or 50 kilos or whatever here and there, it ain't going to make a, a big difference, to be honest with you. So there you go. Um, that is the fuel. That is the flight plan. Uh, that is how you get yourself going in the dash 8. So now what we would do is we would just do the basic setup. We'd hit go around. We'd hit outsell. We'd hit uh, heading select. We'd get the uh, the um, heading on the runway heading. Let me just press format and take that back to where it should be. So there you go. And then we would put our initial altitude in. I think the initial climb, didn't it say it was 6,000 feet? I can't remember now. Yeah, 6,000 feet. There you go. And then we would put our V-speeds in. And then we always depart in the Q400 in the pink. So the nav source would uh, spin around. And it would also spin around on the FO side. Um, what you can do, if you really want to be a good boy, is cross-fill the flight plan to the side. And you can cross-fill the fuel to the side as well. And that's it. There you go. Life in the Dash 8. Right, let's go uh, real quick back to the comments before I dash off. Uh, loving the streams. Uh, how are we making the uh, the 777? Um, it's coming on. It's a uh, it's a big job. Uh, we keep adding stuff to it every day. There's a lot of uh, mission creep, but uh, but it's it's gone pretty well uh, so far. So there you go, guys. Um, that's me done. Right, I've got to shoot. It's lunchtime here. I'm very hungry. I'm gonna head off and have a healthy <coughs> salad. 
and uh, I'll see you again. Uh, don't forget, by the way, guys, I'm going to be streaming uh, this weekend. It's the OVPA, which is the Online Virtual Pilots Association. Uh, they have a stream this weekend, and I'm going to be on there with uh, Stephen Hood from Dovetail, uh, with uh, Kevin from uh, FSFX, uh, who make um, Pacific, Pacific FX. Uh, I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, with uh, Reed from Rex, uh, and also with Matthias from Aerosoft as well. So um, hopefully uh, I'll see you there. It's going to be uh, Saturday night, 7 p.m. All right, guys. Have a good one. See you again soon. Bye-bye.